All right, hey there guys, this is Cortexian. Today I'm going to be showing you how to edit the Photoshop PSD file for the uh, ship scroll sig that I've kind of demoed and shown off on the forums here for you. Um, this is going to basically just illustrate how to customize it to show off your specific hangar of ships. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up Photoshop and make sure you've got your uh, animation window section open at the bottom here. Uh, on older versions of Photoshop, you're going to go to Window, and I believe it says Animation in here. You're going to tick that off so it'll show up. And you're going to want it in Frame Animation Mode. Um, in CS6, um, if I make a new document here, you can see um, this lets me select either Video Timeline or Frame Animation. You're going to want it in Frame Animation Mode. It should automatically go in when you open this PSD file. But in case it doesn't, now you know. That's something you're going to want to have set up. So uh, you're going to want to open up the all ships scroll sig.psd that I'm providing a link for on Dropbox. This is automatically set up to scroll through every single announced available ship variant in the game, pretty much, that you can pledge for or purchase or whatever it is that you want to call it. So. Um, yeah, like I said, it scrolls through them all. Um, all the layers are by default alphanumerical organized on the right-hand side here. Um, and I actually have it set up so that the sources are all in this folder. Uh, the background is just a, a blank background, basically. Um, let's see if I can hide all of these for you. I can't. Oh well, whatever. But the bank, the background is just basically the uh, without the picture and the text and everything. If you if you need that, it's there. Um, you shouldn't need it though. I don't think for any real reason. So you can ignore that. All the ship templates are right here though, as well. Um, so that's all there for you. But uh, let's say in your collection you have a freelancer a cutlass and an avenger so first step you're going to want to actually do is delete all these frames so just um you know select them all i clicked here and then just shift clicked on this last one um delete them all except for the first one because we're not going to be using those boom gone and then, so what did I say? I said we've got a Avenger, so I don't need these layers anymore. You, mo you may want to um, save as, so Control-Shift-S uh, before you make any changes to this in case you screw up. That way you don't have to re-download the folder again, or the file. So um, save the PSD before you make these changes. And I apologize for this being slow. It, it has something to do with the way I'm recording it. It's it's kind of slow to load up. Um, anyway, so let's say you have an Avenger. <clears throat> a Cutlass. Sorry, I'm just deleting all the extra layers, basically, that I don't need, just to make it easier to work with and a freelancer. Okay, so we'll get rid of Gladiator all the way down to there. That just makes it a little bit easier here so that I don't have to uh, make it any more confusing than it needs to be to start with. Come on, let's go. Okay, so uh, basically you can see these look like blank layers, but the content is actually just below the frame. All I did there was just use the, dra the move tool in Photoshop to drag the content up. So you're going to want to do that for the first ship you want to display. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to duplicate the frame while the other layers are sitting below the main view of the image. Then you're going to want to select the Avenger and the Cutlass. And basically, you're just going to click and drag. Um, you can click and then hold down shift, and that basically just moves you left or right or up and down, and you can't go at an angle. See how I'm moving the mouse at an angle, but it's not just like doing this. You don't want to do that because you want everything to be in line, and you just want it to move straight up and down. So just drag it up so that the interplanetary cutlass is showing. Hit the tween button, 
set the frames to add to 10, uh, leave this stuff as default, so layers, all layers, parameters, position, opacity, effects, everything, and set it to tween with the previous frame. And basically that will create a bunch of these frames here, basically, that show it kind of, you know, scrolling up. Now what we want it to do is we want it to pause on the actual ship images, but we don't want it to pause on every single one of these frames. We want these to be fairly quick. So we're going to click on one of them and then hold down shift and click on the timing of the end one here and change their frame or their frame timing to just 0.1 seconds. So now it pauses for a second on one, goes quickly through those other ones and then pauses again. And you can see since it's set to loop forever down here, um, basically it's just jumping back to this first frame instead of nicely looping over. So I'll show you how to loop that at the end, and one of the key things to do for that is actually on the last frame here, take that first ship that you had and drag it back down below the frame. Notice how that doesn't change anything else because we're basically just editing its position on this last frame where it's currently out of the view because we moved it up here and then we moved it back down here. So we're going to want it in this area down below the, the frame. Um, now we've got the cutlass open and we want to bring the freelancer up. So we're going to select those two layers, duplicate the frame, and click, hold down shift, and drag up. Click the tween button, 10 frames, and then we'll adjust the timing here again, do, 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 just like so. And now you can see we're going from the cutlass to the freelancer. And again, it's going to jump back to the uh, Avenger frame immediately instead of nicely scrolling back to it. So to fix that, we're going to, like I said, reset the cutlass frame because it's currently up here, so we're going to drag it back down below. So it's reset in case we need to use it again in the future. This is important if you've got like 20 ships and you're doing this a lot. It's it's very important. If, if you have one of those big packages that have like all the ships, just save this PSD file or use the demo one that I've already made because it, it's already there. There's no need for you to do this again if you have all the ships. Um, but if you want to customize it, this is how you do it. So anyway, drag that back down to the bottom. Now what you're going to want to do is take the Freelancer and the Avenger, duplicate the frame, drag up because now we're basically going to tween this with the previous frame. Uh, reset the timings for the ones in between and now you can see we're going from the freelancer back to a nice scroll into the Avenger. Now one thing you want to note is okay so our first frame here is paused for one second on Avenger then it scrolls away to the cutlass and the cutlass scrolls to the freelancer and the freelancer scrolls back to the Avenger but it pauses for a second again so we have two frames one at the end and one at the beginning that are both the same frame and they're pausing for two seconds. So that's not going to be consistent because we've got one second here um, and then we've got one second here and a one second here but we have another one second here which effectively like when I play this back it effectively pauses for two seconds. So one second, one second, two seconds. See how that pauses for a little bit longer? So we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to just delete this last frame. Yes, yes, yes. I want to delete the frame. And the reason that's OK is because you see here, as we go through these one by one, and then we get to this last frame that's only one second long, we're looping back to the front. So it's going to pause here anyway. So now if we watch this, it's going to nicely loop through, and then it's going to loop back to the front, and it's still going to only pause for one second. So that's basically how you do that. Now, if you've saved as, you may want to save at this point just to keep your PSD up to date. Excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> um, and then basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to save for web. So you can uh, just hit File, Save for Web, uh, or do Alt-Shift-Control-S, longest keyboard shortcut in existence. Anyway, so I'm going to do that. You can preview it here again, uh, but basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use one of these presets, either uh, GIF128 dithered or no dither. Uh, just use the one that results in the lowest file size over here, 
and he should be good to go. So that's going to be the no dither. And that's a very tiny file by today's standards. Um, I mean, we set this to a more modern download time, and you're looking at two seconds to download that file. And most people have probably faster internet than two megabit per second download. So it shouldn't be that big of an issue. They measure in 56K because in a professional environment, you always want to cater in web development to the person with the lowest common denominator or the, the, the slowest speed. Um, so it'll take someone with 56k dial-up 35 seconds to load this. Sucks to be them. <laughs> uh, anyway, just save it. Um, you can call it whatever you want. Um, I'll overwrite this demo GIF that I did earlier for something else. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you got it saved. So at that point, you can then upload it to your favorite image host. Uh, beware, some image hosts do not let you host animated GIFs. Um, I use Imgur personally myself, so it's I-M-G-U-R dot com. And they've worked pretty well for me since. Um, if you guys have any questions, if this didn't make sense to you, or I rambled too much, or whatever, let me know. I'll try and make a more condensed video. And yeah. Hopefully, uh, I see a few more of these SIGs popping up on the forums. I think they look pretty neat. They show off your uh, your signature uh, in a fairly condensed form. Um, if you want some tips on formatting it in your actual SIG, post in the thread, and I will get back to you, and um, I can show you some HTML formatting that should work. Um, I'll post mine as an example, because uh, I've actually got a left and right aligned image in my SIG. Um, on the same line, um, and if you're not familiar with HTML or coding or anything like that, doing that normally using BB code and bulletin code uh, or bulletin board code would be a little bit wonky. So uh, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and thanks for watch watching, watching, blah, blah. sorry about that, bye.